I want people to get comfortable with seeing people with disabilities everywhere. You will see me at the beach, you will see me at restaurants, and I do this in hope that society starts treating disabled people as a part of society too, you know, because we can coexist. I want people to treat it that way. My name is Fatma Zora. I'm a full-time program manager, a part-time model, and a disabilities and mental health advocate. My name is Amal Lukman, and I teach social studies and literature. My name is Elil, and I work as a director in a security agency, uh, providing you know security guards for condos and uh, commercial buildings. So when I was 20 years old, I was involved in a car accident that actually instantly left me paralyzed neck down. I had a minor brain injury and a very severe spinal cord injury. Every muscle that below my neck is paralyzed, meaning the muscles that should help me breathe are affected too. I went through quite a bit in life. I was born uh, blind on my right eye. So anything beyond a certain point on my right side is just nothing. And I had stage 2 Hodgkin's disease when I was 17. 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with two separate cancers at the same time. So it was colorectal cancer and uh, testicular cancer. Colorectal cancer actually left me with a permanent stoma, which means I need to wear a bag to dispose of my stool from my abdomen. I think as a society, people don't seem to know how to react to someone who's different to them. So as a, as a child, I, I was constantly very uh, conscious of how I presented myself to people. There were constant stares that I had to put up with. There were just random strangers just coming up to me, just curious. I've had strangers just come touch me and they're like, um, can you feel it? And would you just touch a random woman? I want the same privacy and respect that you would give other women, you know? I think it's important for us as a society to understand the difficulties that people with disabilities are living with. Uh, it can be really, really challenging. So unless you put yourself in, uh, in their shoes, it's very difficult to imagine. I was given the easiest stretch the one with the least obstacles, and I found it really, really difficult. The physical element, the, the strength required, having to manoeuvre the, the wheelchair over bumps and stuff like that, it, it was really tough. A path that may seem to be straight can be undulating and can be sloping down on one side. A person on a wheelchair may not have the strength or the energy to actually push or wheel themselves through it. here at the starting point guys very excited Super. so we have Joel, Elio and Amal so um, they are all avid um, volunteers of Singapore Cancer Society so knowing that um, today we are supporting another charity organization SPD they have came down to show their support and uh, I'm very very fortunate and looking forward to conquering 36 kilometers today yeah. with these guys right. yeah. okay guys be ready yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it Uh, certain areas, for example, Lonely Highway, we aren't able to just go uh, as planned because it's not wheelchair friendly. There aren't even any uh, lift for wheelchair oh. to uh, uh, transport us from like this side of the road exactly. over to the other side. It's a little thing that we, we take for granted that if you just want to cross the road, it is almost impossible. If you're on a wheelchair or you're, you're wheelchair bound, definitely uh, this is not Easy. It's gonna be a huge obstacle. Come on, Zara. That's it. One, one. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. Look at that. It's just flat. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think for 
for the most part, Singapore is very accessible. I mean, there's ramps everywhere, but there's certain areas where I wouldn't be able to go up, I wouldn't be able to go down. It's like, what if I fall back? It's okay to ask for help, but sometimes I want to have that access where I can just go in anywhere. How can society help us? Like, advocate for accessibility when you don't see it. Question and check with management, check with authorities, because it doesn't have to be just our fight. Even though I've faced some challenges, I was quite fortunate. I've never really had a lot of difficulties in terms of financial, in terms of like peer or family support. So uh, it's always at the back of my head, like trying to contribute back and trying to make uh, things better for the people around me. Just because you are a cancer patient or a cancer survivor doesn't mean you just have to keep receiving. Because there's so much you, uh, you have, your skill sets, uh, that you can actually give back to society. And that is something that I also wanted to, to show through uh, this activity. Today is day three, which is the last day, and we definitely can do more than what we have done. Many people with disabilities may sort of feel like they are disabled already and there's nothing more they can contribute to the society or to those who really need it. So I think it's, it's, it's fortunate to have Zora being part of the team and also those who came down today, yesterday and on first day to support us. I think this expedition wouldn't have been so successful without uh, everybody's contribution. I think it's been a very humbling experience to have this opportunity to, to go through the whole journey. Actually, it's really eye-opening to see how much more we can do as a society to make it more inclusive for people who have various disabilities. The fact that you see so much unity here, mm -hmm. I hope society uh, takes that message from this expedition and realizes that people with disabilities do need support and encouragement. Well said, well said. Um, bring it in all together one more time. Well done, guys. Well done. Thank you, guys, man. All together. Awesome. <laughs> well done.